Building event-driven applications on top of Kafka using the .NET client library by Confluent can give a lot of work. There are many patterns on this type of application, and today I want to show you a framework that will help you out building your event-driven applications on top of Kafka in a simple and maintainable way. The framework that I want to show you is this one, is Kafka Flow that is developed by Farfetch and is an open source project. And by the way, if you have the time, please make sure you leave it a star. It's always important for the creators. As you can see here on the GitHub page, Kafka Flow is built on top of the Confluent Kafka client. So even then you are still using the Confluent Kafka client and you can access it. But in fact, Kafka Flow will give you a set of features that will help you out to have better and maintainable event-driven applications. Let me show them. If you go to the documentation, you can see right here the list of features from Kafka Flow. And as you can see, it's a quite extensive list of things that are built on top of the Confluent client library. All of that to simplify your life. We'll go through some of them to show you. To the other ones, if you are interested in some of them, please let me know and I will make sure that we record a video for that. Let's jump to the source code to show you what Kafka Flow is capable of. To do that, I will be using one simple example with one application that will be publishing messages, will be a producer, and is a REST API, by the way, and two applications that will consume those messages. By the way, you can grab the source code as a patron. Let's start by this one, the task API. This is a simple REST API using minimal APIs where I have a single endpoint, and this endpoint will be responsible to add a task to our system. And here you can find two things, a request handler that has no code at the moment, but also here the contract that you'll be receiving, okay? This represents the message that we'll receive in our application. So as you can see, there's a title, a description, but also a due date. Based on this request, we want to publish a message to Kafka into a given topic, so other applications can do stuff with that. And we'll have two applications. One will be this statistics one that will be basically incrementing a counter. And this one will be responsible for notifications. So every time that the date only is set on the message, we want to schedule something. We will not be doing the full implementation. Obviously, we'll just focus on the way of exchanging messages through Kafka with Kafka Flow. So first step is installing Kafka Flow as a Nougat package. I will install a few of them just to make sure that we cover all the features that I want to show you. I will explain them in a moment when we are building the configuration. So the way that Kafka Flow works is that you define the configuration of your relationship with Kafka through dependency injection. So if we go here on this case to myprogram.cs, it can be your startup.cs, in the same way that you register all other your dependencies through the service configuration, here we can say dot add Kafka. Now on this Kafka, we can start adding stuff. Just adding a cluster, and to the cluster, I will define the brokers, okay? The endpoint where it's running. So I'm running it on Docker localhost, so localhost 1992. Now I will define here a constant with the topic name that I want to use. And the next thing that I'll be doing is just using this create topic if not exists. It's a good way for this type of demos to make sure that things are there uh, when we need it. So create topic if not exists, topic name, number of partitions and replication factor of that topic. And now let's just add a producer, okay? So this application will be publishing messages into the topic. So in this case, I need a producer. By the way, if you are interested in a video explaining the basic concepts of Kafka, please let me know in the comments. Add producer, I need to give a name to the producer. This name will be useful when you need, I need to access it to publish something. So I will name it publish task. And now let's configure it. First thing that I will be defining is the name of the default topic where messages will be published. Okay, so every time that I use this producer, by default, it will publish to the same topic. So I don't need to specify when I'm publishing which topic. Obviously, that can be overrided. So default topic will be the topic name. And now I will use the concept of Kafka Flow that I will explain in a minute. That is a middleware. And I want to add a middleware that will be responsible to apply a serialization to this message. So I want to make sure that uh, I'm serializing with a given format. I will be using system.text.json by .NET. 
dot s realizer so here i have all the configurations that i need to have my producer working next step is accessing this producer and publishing a message i will be doing that as i told you i'm using minimal apis and my endpoint is invoking this request handler so what i need to do to get that producer by dependency injection is going here and define my iProducer accessor. Now that I have the producer accessor, I can get that producer with the name that I registered on the dependency injection. So I'm getting a producer with publish task name. Now that I have the producer, I can publish the message. I will await this producer sync and here I will define the message key that I want and the request. As you can see, I'm sending to the producer sync this type but in fact, the middleware will act when I'm publishing the message and will serialize it to JSON. Last but not least, return results.accepted. So let's see if I see an 202 when I publish this message. Run the application. And here on Postman, let's call the endpoint and send it this payload, okay? So I'm sending title, description, and a due date, 202. Let's send a second version this time without the due date. Okay, so now I have two messages inside of the topic. So let's move on to the other applications and try to handle this so we can see how to define a consumer. Let's start by the notifications one. So I have to install some NuGet packages and I will define it right here just to save us some time. What I am installing, Kafka Flow, Kafka Flow extensions hosting. This one is because Kafka Flow can give me a way to simply define that I want a, a background job. I don't need to create a NoSet service and do all that work myself. Now I'm saying the logger that I want, also once again, dependency injection because we define everything through the Microsoft dependency injection. But why is this a different package? Because in fact, you can use Unity, for example, as a dependency injection container. So you can opt out for this one and use the Unity one. Serializer, JSON core, and now I have this one, the type handlers, that is one specific case that I want to show you. Add a reference to the tasks API because the contract of the message is there. Since this is a console application, let's start with just a few things. I want to define here the topic name that I will be looking into, the service collection, so we can define everything through dependency injection, and also the that I want to use the console log on the Microsoft logging strategy. Now, since I want to add Kafka Flow, but I want to have it running as a hosted service, instead of doing services.addKafka, I will do services.addKafka hosted service. And now we can configure it. The first step is quite similar to what we already know. We just define the logging strategy that we want a cluster and where that cluster is. Now this application will act as a consumer. Okay, instead of a producer. So here I will say, instead of add producer, I will say add consumer. But in fact, one application can have both roles, can be multiple consumers, can be multiple producers, okay? It depends on the use case. So I will add the consumer and let's configure it. First thing, the topic that this application will be consuming. Now we define the name of the consumer group, notifications. And here I will define the work account what is the work account? Kafka Flow has a feature that you can define a multi-threaded consumer. This is pretty cool because you can take advantage of the threads inside of your application and scale out your application not only by having more applications, but also on having that single instance doing more stuff in, in parallel. But the cool thing is that Kafka Flow has a mechanism that will even then guarantee order. Now I will just say that I want to consume everything since the beginning of the, the topic. I don't want to just be looking for the new ones. I could go here and say, for example, that I want to use manual store of offsets, but I want to take advantage of the features by Kafka Flow of doing that automatically. So I don't need to be concerned about that. And now we define our middlewares. So middlewares, if you are familiar with the mediator, this logic will look similar to you. Since the message was published using system.text.json, I will use the same. By the way, Kafka Flow has multiple st testing strategies, like the using Newtonsoft is another option for JSON. You can use Avro, you can use Protobuf. There's a lot of them that are already available. And now let's take advantage of that 
package, the type handlers package, okay? Let's define it. And here I can do something similar like you do in Mediator, for example, where I can define an handler for a given type of message. For example, on this case, I will create named add task handler. It doesn't exist yet. And I will go here and I will create that type, move it to other file, implement the iMessage handler for the type add task request because it's the type of the message that we are serializing. So on the deserialization, I could deserialize to add task request because of an adder that uh, Kafka flow adds to the message. And now I know that is this handle that should be invoked when I receive a message like that. So on this case, what I want to do is simply log the message. Okay. Ideally you will implement the real use case, but I will just do a log so we can see that the message was processing. Receive the log through dependency injection. And now if the due date is set, I want to write a message saying, okay, I have a new task that is scheduled and here it's done the handler. So gets back to the configuration and now we need to start Kafka flow. So to do that, we build the, the service provider and now we create a, a bus and we start that bus. Okay. And then when someone writes enter, for example, we can close everything. Let's run it and see if we could consume those messages that we published, those two that we used the um, postman to publish. So let's run the notifications. It is connected to a partition and we have here one message only. Why I only have one? Because the other one has no due date. And as you remember, I have a, a NIF condition to ignore those. As you can see, it's as simple as defining a producer, defining a consumer. The logic is quite simple. Let's just apply this to the statistics as well, because I want to show you an extra feature there. But just to save us some time, I will do some things on the background and I will explain you in a second. Okay, so I'm back. And what I have done in the background, I installed some packages as in the other one, but instead of installing the type handler, I installed one that the name is batch consume. Okay, and I will explain that in a moment. The definition is the same, okay, I'm connecting to the cluster, defining a consumer as well, consuming the same topic, this time with a different consumer group, so I can handle the same message as well. Same type of definition, but this time on the middlewares, I will have one that is not a type handler, but is in fact a batch consume. This one is a, a middleware that will make sure that we'll wait a given number of seconds. Let me pull this thing up. Wait basically five seconds to see if he receives more messages. Then he has a batch up to 100. And then he forward the results to the next middleware. Now I just go here and I say, okay, I want to add a statistics middleware. It doesn't exist yet. Let's create it. And this middleware will be an iMessage middleware. And on this middleware, I can do this. I can access the messages batch that come from the previous one. It's as simple as doing this. So as you remember, the goal here would be to have a kind of a total count of um, tasks in the system. So let's create a simple static variable. Okay, an int with the total. Okay, we have the batch count. So the number of messages that we have on the batch. And now let's just write to the console the result. The current total with the number. So what we should see on our case, since we have two, we should see two on the console and we return it. So as you can see, once again, it's pretty simple to have the definition, okay? Because on this type of event-driven applications, you either have a kind of a publisher, right? That is a producer and you have all the configuration here, but also you have consumers that will call handlers and middlewares. Besides that, I don't need to think a lot about uh, managing the commits myself, unless I want it. I can build my pipelines. Uh, I have a lot of options to optimize like this worker counts thing. So just make sure to take a look. Let's run this statistics application to see if it behaves as expected. See the total count is two. So it's running perfectly. There are other features on Kafka flow that we can take advantage, like having a management API, a management dashboard, by the way, if you want to see those, make sure you leave a comment as, as always. What do you think about Kafka Flow? Are you thinking about giving it a chance? And by the way, YouTube thinks that this video right here is pretty cool one for you. And I agree with him. I will see you soon. And in the meanwhile, keep it simple.